Hi guys, James at Rampant Lion Reviews again for you today with another beer review. For this one we are going to stick to Scotland but we're going to go to a very famous part of the country that many of you will know as being home to a monster but it's also home to a very good brewery as well. So we're going to head up to Drum the Drocket which is on the shores of Loch Ness and we're going to revisit the Loch Ness Brewery and today we're having a taste of their peated cask 7 beer which is a it's a, an, a whiskey barrel aged beer this one and if you've watched my channel before you will know that I'm a great fan of smoked beers and apparently this one has a nice woody smoky finish to it so I'm very much looking forward to this beer and I have been very impressed with the other beers I've tried from the Loch Ness Brewery before. They I think give these guys a little bit of time and they will become a very well established Scottish brewery. The, every beer I've tried from them has been really quite nice actually so just give them a little bit of time and I'm sure you will start finding their beers abroad and things. I think that's how good this brewery is. But anyway, as is usual with my beer reviews then, I'll take you through a very brief history of the company. It will only be one or two minutes long but if you want to get straight to the tasting just fast forward the brewery website's in the video description for you below along with a link to my other reviews that I've done from Loch Ness before the Lightness and the Blackberry Loch Ness I've reviewed for you very nice beers so do check them out and please also add me as a friend on Untapped and like my Facebook page as well you'll find all the links below like I said but anyway to tell you about the brewery itself the brewery is located in the small town of Drumnadrocket on the shores of Loch Ness and it's actually attached to the Ben Leva Hotel but the brewery and hotel are owned by brothers Alan and Stephen Crossland and they decided that they wanted to add a small two barrel brewing plant to the hotel's pub and start brewing their own beers for sale in the hotel but they served their first beer in the pub on January of 2011 and this proved to be very popular so they actually began bottling up some of their beers and distributing them on quite a small scale and I actually bought this bottle of beer over in uh, at Dunatar Wines and Spirits in, uh, in Stonehaven so that's kind of as far afield as their beers are getting at the moment I think you can get them down in Glasgow and Edinburgh as well but I'm sure we'll see some expansion from them in the fairly near future but apparently a lot of the early help in establishing this brewery came from Angus McRory at the Isle of Skye Brewery who are another very good and upcoming brewery I think they are already exporting some of their beers I saw them out in Australia so Isle of Skye Brewery one of the more established Scottish craft breweries and also worth checking out but Loch Ness are one of the more up and coming ones but the brewery they do some kind of traditional styles of beer as well but they also have some more adventurous modern brews that are more like some of the um, American craft brewing renaissance beer so a lot of interesting stuff coming out of this brewery but they're looking at further expanding the brewery operation just simply because of how popular these beers have proved to be so I'm sure in the next little while they'll start exporting more and you'll see a lot more different beers coming out from them soon but just to list the other beers you can get from these guys for the moment there's the Lightness which is a golden ale, Wilderness which is an Amber Ale, Redness which is a Red Bitter, Loch Ness which is a traditional 80 shilling and there's also Darkness as well which is a Stout and they've got various other ones that are brewed and sold at the Ben Leva Hotel on cask and they've got a few limited editions like this one. There was also a Sherry version of this uh, cask 7 and they also did. They also had one that I mentioned to you before that was a Loch Ness version brewed with some nice Loch Ness blackberries there as well so there's a lot of interesting output coming from this brewery. <clears throat> but pardon me. Um, so anyway, let's get on to the tasting of this beer itself. Let me just bring up the camera and let you have a little look at the artwork on this one here. So I'll just look, check that you can see this quite nicely. You can see Nessie kind of swimming a little bit there. I'll just put the light down and let you see that a bit better. The light's reflecting off that just because of how light the label is, but you can see Nessie having a wee swim in the water there. And it says Loch Ness Whiskey Beer Company, this one, as you can see, Peated Cask 7, 7.1% 7 on the bottom. On the back it tells you, Peated Cask 7 is a beer lovingly crafted by Loch Ness Brewery, then matured in single malt whiskey casks on the shores of Loch Ness. The casks have been carefully selected by John Beach of Fiddler's Malt Whiskey Bar, which I'm guessing is quite local to uh, the brewery itself. But this is a deep red complex beer made with seven malts and seven hops and has been aged in an island whisky cast. This has delivered a smoked wood finish to the beer so should be a very very nice one for us. It was bottled in January of 20... I think it was in January... oh sorry it's been... it was bottled on yeah, the, the January 2014. I thought I was misreading that on the back of the label there. So it's a year and a bit old. But at 7.1%, it should still be pretty in pretty good shape, I would say. So you can see on the back, there's the two symbols there. The Loch Ness Brewery and Fiddler's Whiskey Bar. So it should be a really nice one for us to try. I bought this. The guy in the shop that I bought this from told me that it had been around for a while. But I didn't realise it was a year old. But should be still good anyway. At 7.1%, the beer will last for quite a while in the bottle. So as you can see, a nice smoky opener on this one. Plain bottle cap on this, by the way, just a silver one. So let's get this guy out and we'll get on with the cask here. 
The guy did tell me that um, when they tried these beers, they felt they needed a bit more maturation in the bottle. So maybe they've actually just had them off the shelves for a little while, and this is why they're only kind of selling them now. But it should be very nice for us to try anyway. All of the Loch Ness beers are very good. So let me just bring up the light and let you see the colour of this beer. As you can see, it's poured a nice kind of dark chestnutty colour actually. It's, it looks really, really nice. There's a kind of half finger of a frothy, slightly brownish coloured head on there. A little bit beigey, but maybe more of a creamy colour actually. But you can smell a good bit of fruit coming off this beer actually as you've poured it. But it looks very very nice. In terms of carbonation you can see a few bubbles just stick into the side of the glass and there's quite a few little ones going up towards the bottom of the head there so it looks very very nice this beer actually so let's have a smell of it and see how we get on. It's really interesting that actually it, de it really kind of smells like whiskey. You can really smell the whiskey peat in this one. Um, the other beer that I tried recently that was a smoked a beer was the um, the the peated smoked ale from Loch Lomond, and it, it had the same kind of flavour. This, but it smelled very different. This one smells a lot more kind of boozy, if that makes sense. It really does smell more like a peated whiskey than a smoked beer, if if that makes sense at all. But very very earthy, a really earthy peaty character, which is characteristic of some of these whiskies like Laphroaig and things. Really quite nicely done, actually. There's a bit of kind of sweeter caramel malt under there. But you can really pick up the woodiness, that really earthy smoked peat character in it, and some grainy character as well. You can smell a little bit of the boozy notes as well. There is a nice caramel booziness to this beer, and some kind of red fruits. Very attractive smelling beer, actually. So we, without further ado, let's get stuck into this guy. If you do happen to come across this, definitely take some time and just give it a try and give it a try, give it a smell because it's really really is one of the more unusual beers I've smelled and that's out of 500 or so beer reviews I've done for you now so definitely give this guy a good smell before you actually taste it but let's get stuck into it so this is the Peated Cask 7 from the Loch Ness Brewery on Drum the Drocket on the shores of Loch Ness Slange now that's like nothing I have ever tasted it's really when it said there was a, a smoked woody finish to this beer you usually think oh there'll be some other beery flavors in there but that is it you know it's exactly what it says on the tin it is very woody and very kind of smoky so there's not there's not much more to say about that just on first taste huge peaty malt in there there is a bit more complexity to it there's a kind of fruity element coming out to this one a good red fruit character that just mixes in with that peaty smoke but it's, it's a very heavily smoked and very heavily wood flavoured beer this is. It's like no smoked beer I've ever tried before, it's really quite burnt, it's almost a little bit burnt actually in the way that it comes across with the flavour. Yeah, the most prominent component in this beer really is the kind of burned smoky woody characters in this and they go right into the middle of your tongue you've actually got a good bit of kind of burned charcoaly bitterness in the middle of your tongue there and it just lingers there and it sits there into the aftertaste and around that that's where all these other flavors are coming in there's a little bit of um, a kind of fruity flavor coming out it's definitely red fruits coming out and you can taste that when the liquid's actually on your tongue there is a kind of big fruity element there's obviously american hops in this beer pacific northwest ones i'm guessing But yeah, very different from any other smoked beer I've ever come across before. This one I would say is definitely an acquired taste. It takes a few sips to actually get into this beer properly because it, it is that smoky. You just need to let your mouth adjust to it and get used to that smoky character and then start picking out the other flavours around it. As I've said quite a few times now, like nothing else I've ever tried before on this channel. There is, if you pay attention to the very centre of your palate, you'll taste a very nice, quite sweet caramel in there. As you go down the middle of the tongue, that's a really dark, smoky, almost charcoaly wood flavour that you're getting from this beer. It, it really is just really very interesting, this. I've never tasted anything like it at all. There's some earthy hop character at the very back corners of your palate there, and then some of these red fruits 
it's got to be quite raisiny or plummy but around the very edges of your tongue there it's just some really nice red fruity characteristics and it's it's really quite well done actually it's definitely an acquired taste like I say but just take a few sips of it and allow your palate to adjust then you'll be able to pick out all the flavours that are in this beer yeah it's actually when your mouth adjusts to it it is actually quite juicy with these fruit flavours the red fruits in it are actually quite prominent and that's the Pacific Northwest hops coming out there it's when they said it was a, a woody smoked finish to this one you know they weren't lying it really is quite prominent on that front usually the smoked beers I've come across are a kind of meaty smoke if that makes sense the peat the peat smoked tail that I had from Loch Lomond was some kind of infusion between a meaty smoked character and um, a little bit of a, of a kind of woody smoke it had a sort of woody infused flavour but this one is smoked wood that's the flavour that you're getting from this one it's, it's it really is like nothing else I've ever tried before on the channel and I keep saying that but this is just such a unique beer so definitely give it a try if you get the chance an acquired taste but I actually really quite like it and as a big fan of smoked beers I hope you will take my opinion into account on that one this is a really nice and very quirky and interesting beer in terms of the mouthfeel of this one I would say definitely mid-bodied it's got a, a very soft carbonation in it I would say and it's got a nice kind of malty sweetness to it but there's a good bit of bitter character right in the middle of your tongue there and that's just from that smoky roasted character there but it's actually in the aftertaste it's really quite dry but at the same time you've got a good bit of wet juicy fruit in this beer it really is just like nothing I've ever tasted before so definitely worth having a go at if you've never tried um, a smoked beer in your life it's, it's very quirky and very different from any of them if you even if you enjoy smoked beers this is very quirky and like nothing you'll ever taste that's all I can say about it it's such an interesting beer this one and it's been really cool to return to the Loch Ness Brewery once again I think it's it's hard to actually rate this and tell you what I th what I would think of it just because it is that quirky. You really have to try this beer for yourselves. Very, very interesting one and I've really quite enjoyed reviewing it for you today. And I definitely would go back to this. I'd love to try it on tap and just see how that smokiness comes out on tap but I really don't know if they actually ever did produce this one for cast so maybe I'll send the review to them and see what they tell me about that but anyway um, I hope you've enjoyed this beer review very cool to return to the Loch Ness Brewery and try such a, an interesting beer especially a smoked beer which is one of my favourite styles but when it says it's a woody smoky finish on it they really mean it with this one very quirky beer but with some nice juicy fruits in there too so really one that you want to try but I hope you've enjoyed this beer review as always let me know in the comment section your own thoughts on this beer below comment and let me know and as I said before please like my Facebook page add me as a friend on Untapped and I will be back soon with more beer reviews I'm sure I'll go back to the Loch Ness Brewery at some point in the very near future but until then slange you for now and I will and I hope you enjoy the rest of my beer reviews Cheers.